Hello, welcome to part 6 of Clinical Physiotherapy MCQ series. Let's move to our 26th question. A physical therapist is treating a young adult with gastronomous muscle strength of 5 plus, that's 3 plus of 5. In the prone position, which of the following exercise is most appropriate to maximize the strengthening? Option A, resistive exercise with knee bent. Option B, resistive exercise with knee straight. Option C, active assistive exercise with knee bent. Option D, active assistive exercise with knee straight. And the answer is... Option B, resistive exercise with knee straight. Explanation to this question is, with a muscle grade of 8 plus, the patient should not need active assistive exercise. Resisted exercise against gravity would be most appropriate to strengthen this muscle. Since the gastronomus crosses both knee and ankle, bending the knee would put the gastronomus in shortened position and lessen its ability to produce tension. Therefore, exercising with the knee straight would put the gastronomus on stretch and increasing its ability to produce tension. Now let's move to our 27th question. A 30-year-old patient reports anterior lateral shoulder pain with an insidious onset. Examination shows full passive range of motion, pain on passive lateral or external rotation and pain on resistive medial or internal rotation. These signs are consistent with a diagnosis of Option A. Bicepital tendonitis Option B. Supraspinatus tendonitis Option C. Subscapularis tendonitis Option D. Infraspinatus tendonitis And the answer is Option C. Subscapularis tendonitis Explanation to this question is Pain with a resistor medial or internal rotation and pain with passive lateral or external rotation is an indicative of subscapularis tendonitis. Bicepital tendonitis is suspected if resistive supination is painful when the patient's arm is at side and elbow is flexed to 90 degree. Painful resistor abduction and resistant lateral or external rotation is an indicative of supraspinatus tendonitis. Pain on the resistant lateral or external rotation is an indicative of infraspinatus tendonitis. Now let's move to our 28th question. A 42-year-old patient presents with adhesive capsulitis of the shoulder joint. The range of motion examination reveals restricted lateral or external rotation and abduction of the shoulder. The first mobilization procedure that should be done for this patient is Option E, posterior glide. Option B, distraction. Option C, anterior glide. Option D, lateral or external rotation. And the answer is Option B, distraction. Explanation to this question is For this patient, the first mobilization procedure would be distraction of the glenohumeral joint. The distraction separates the joint surface and is used as a test of joint play. The distraction can also help increase the joint play. Distraction may be also used in conjunction with other mobilization techniques listed. Later mobilization techniques would be most likely include anterior glide. Now move to our 29th question. A 46-year-old patient is referred to physical therapy for treatment of tenosynovitis. The patient reports a pain and needle sensation of the palmar surface of the thumb, first digit, index, second digit, and middle finger, that's third digit. The physical therapist examination reveals a positive tenile sign at the wrist and good 4 plus grade opposition of the thumb, that's first digit. Based on these findings, the therapist should suspect Option A, median nerve compression at the wrist. Option B, ulnar nerve compression distal to the elbow. Option D, tenosynovitis of the abductor pole is longus. Option D, thoracic outlet syndrome. And the answer is Option A, median nerve compression at the wrist. Explanation to this question is the median nerve supplies sensory innervation of the palmar surface of the thumb, index, and middle fingers. A positive tenile sign elicitate a paresthesia while tapping on the carpal tunnel at the wrist, and weakness of opponent's polysis muscle are indicative of carpal tunnel syndrome. Ulnar nerve compression would cause the sensory and motor changes in the little and ring, ring fingers, not the thumb. Tenosynovitis of the abductor pollis longus muscle would most likely to reveal Franklin test stretching of the abductor muscle. 
with pain of the dorsum of the thumb. Thoracic outlet syndrome would most likely to reveal with special tests that cause alteration of the radial pulse. Now let's move to our 30th question. A patient who has right piriformis syndrome is referred to physical therapy for evaluation and intervention. Patient history include total hip arthroplasty on the right side two years ago. Because of the total hip arthroplasty, which of the following intervention required added precaution for this patient? Option A, transcutaneous electrical nerve stimulation, that's 10. Option B, continuous ultrasound. Option C, hot packs. Option D, massage to the right hip. And the answer is... Option B, continuous ultrasound. Explanation to this question is, the only one of the above intervention that requires precaution because of the total hip replacement is continuous ultrasound. However, that does not mean that ultrasound is contraindicated for this patient. Transcutaneous electrical nerve stimulation may be used of the metallic implant. Hot packs and massages would not affect the total hip prosthesis. So that's all for today. If you need further clarification, check the description box and give your feedback in the comment box. If you like this MCQ session, do subscribe this channel for more videos. Thank you.